Please welcome our first speakers to the stage. Brian Beitler, Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Lane Bryant. And Chris Hersick, Senior Vice President, Creative and Content, The Foundry at Time Incorporated. Let's just uh, go back one year ago. There is a long process between coming up with the concept for the issue and choosing the cover model. After looking at thousands of photos, the editors at SI have made their choice. Haley Clausen, Ashley Graham, Rhonda Rousey. We can now reveal the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit 2016 cover. For the first time ever, there are three covers! Three covers! Describe this moment. I am, I am so, I'm shaking, I'm so honored, I'm sorry, I just took the mic out of your hand, I'm gonna take over! <laughs> what oh is going on? What is going on? Oh my god! I, I'm shaking, I mean, you know what the best part about is three different types of women representing every woman out there. We're rocking it! I mean, I can't believe this. I love to hear the stories of incredible brands, and I have four daughters that are 15 to 21, and I've watched them go through adolescence, and I've watched the pressures that the world places on them. Candidly, that swimsuit issue. I love the idea Snickers had behind it. I hate the idea of the swimsuit issue. Hate it. <laughs> I love that women want to buy swimsuits and they should be able to do so and go to the beach. But the impression that you have to be a certain size in order to be deemed beautiful or sexy or desirable in this world is wrong. And we had to figure out how do we help a brand that's stuck tell a story that says maybe the swimsuit issue isn't the only way to look at a woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So thank you very much. I'm Chris Hersick, and I'm the SVP of Creative and Content at the Foundry. And before I get started, I really wanted to thank Brian for agreeing to do this because I think as we walk through this, it really is a great uh, case study for when two brands really come together, even what might have been an awkward moment, to really sort of create something and to, to be honest, to create a movement. So thank you very much for having us here. You know, on average, the swimsuit issue is seen by over 16 million women. That's larger than the audience of Sports Illustrated, who has millions of female sports fans all across the world. But that issue is so powerful, and it's been credited with some amazing sort of um, historical moments along the way. Back in 1946, the original uh, bikini, if you will, was sort of created. But it wasn't until 1964 where, when the very first issue of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit came out with Julie Campbell, was it really recognized as a legitimate bathing apparel. So leave it to the power of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit issue to be that uh, modem of, of change, if you will. It also has a long history of advancing our models' careers where they have gone on to be entrepreneurs, activists, uh, media moguls. Um, Tyra Banks, in 1997, was the very first African-American woman to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated Swim. That was 20 years ago. And it was also the very first issue where it wasn't part of the uh, Sports Illustrated issue. It was actually a standalone environment. But if you look at some of the the people that have had their careers um, kicked off, if you will, or launched because of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit, you'll see uh, media moguls like Heidi Klum, entrepreneurs and activists like Petra Nemkova, Kate Upton, Ashley Graham, and one even billionaire, Kathy Ireland. Many of these women have gone on to to lead very successful careers that were started with this issue. And as you can see, we're very proud of what we have started and very proud of this franchise, what we have built. We have positively engaged millions of female supporters, readers of the issue, but also of Sports Illustrated in a way that was very powerful. The issue itself has always been part of the cultural vernacular. 
So when Brian, you know, made those comments on stage last year, I think I was sitting sort of in that area according to the video, it was a little <laughs> bit of an awkward moment. But you know what, rather than sort of taking that and it could have been a possible negative approach to that, I leave it, I give all the credit in the world to Brendan Ripp, who was our then publisher at the time, who reached out and sent an email to Brian entitled Olive Branch. And that email read, Brian, my name is Brendan and I'm the publisher of Sports Illustrated. I heard SI, the brand, took it pretty hard on the chin at the Boston Ad Club. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to come visit and talk to you about ways that we could help your ad dollars extend beyond the norm. You know, as you can see, you know, Brian was so gracious, he reached out and said, would love to speak. You know, obviously, things could have gone very different. When we sat down with Brian, we were both very open-minded. We talked about what the swimsuit franchise stood for. We talked about what Brian's objectives were. And we talked about all the many partnerships that Time Inc. has, has had in the past across the board. You know, one of the most recent and most powerful ones was the Walgreens example, where the beyond beautiful message of the Oscars this past year uh, resonated, where actresses were challenging the media to talk to them and to ask them about what they were doing, not what they were wearing. That they were much more of a story behind the clothing and behind the makeup. And that it was a little bit unfair because the men were asked what they were doing, but the women were not. So we, we worked with Walgreens to help uh, push that movement out, and it was a very successful campaign. So how do we do that same thing with Brian and with Lane Bryant? But don't just hear from me. Please welcome to the stage Brian Beitler. Thanks, Chris. Thank so uh, I, I think Chris was very mild, right? If I was sitting right there and someone stood up and said, I hate your brand, um, my response would have been very different than theirs. So uh, I'm, grateful for, I'm grateful for Brendan and for Chris for having a vision and for listening. I mean, honestly, that's uh, in my 25-year career, it's the best email I've ever received, right? Because you're standing on stage, you take a direct insult to your brand at an event that you sponsor, right? From a brand? that candidly hasn't spent really a lot of money with you ever. Smaller brand, why even pay any attention? Why not write this guy off as a, as, as a lunatic um, and just move on with your life and, and go forward? But that's not what they chose to do, um, right? They said, no, let, let us talk. And what was interesting for me is I went and I sat in the office and, and spent time with Chris and Brendan and their teams, and they shared the story, right? It's a classic case of uninformed um, assumptions, right, about what a brand stood for and, and not being connected and, and being an avid sports reader and Sports Illustrator fan but not paying attention to the Sports Illustrated issue personally over time, not having a connection to what they do and have done for women, which was remarkable to me to step back and look and think about Kathy Ireland as a billionaire and realize that her pathway to that success was launched through her modeling career and her relationship with Sports Illustrated. And I realized in that moment as we started to talk that we go, we share a value here of being able to move and empower women forward. And maybe not all women or men agree with the approach that they take from a directive, but that's true of many of us in all of our businesses. Somebody always has a point of view or perspective that might be different than the way that we're moving forward. But what was clear is they did see this as a platform for helping to move and launch careers and helping to build very successful franchises for both brands and for individuals. And as a platform, as you saw from, from us, when if you were here last year, right, our view was to say, look, we just have to redefine the way we think about women and the way that we think about um, people in this world. And that's what we were committed to. And we started to have that conversation and go, could we do that? What would that, what might that look like and would it be possible and would both brands be willing to take a risk? Mm -hmm. um, because this was a new conversation. The, the idea of body positivity has been around, it's been at a low level until we launched the I'm No Angel campaign. And if you look a year later, year and a half later, what a journey um, we've been on. And there were brands that made incredible, incredible progress like Time Inc. did here, and there are other brands that were still struggling along that journey 
and still in that battle. And that's why that makes that relationship special. And I'll give you an example because we cut an ad, television ad, to release at the same time we were doing the Sports Illustrated Partnership. It was this ad. This body. This body. This body. Made for turning heads. This body is made for proving them wrong. <laughs> it's made for being bold, powerful, and sexy. This body. This body. This body is made for love. This body. It's made for rocking denim. This body is made for style. It's made for living. It's made for getting it on. This body <laughs> is made for breaking the mold. This body is made for starting a revolution. What's your body made for? So our movement and our message, right, to communicate that at the end of the day, and this gets back to what Chris just said about their par partnership with Walgreens, right? So often we measure individuals by their appearance, specifically women on a red carpet, we ask them what they're wearing. We don't ask them the project they've worked on. We don't ask them what they care about. We don't ask them what they use their bodies for, right? And at the end of the day, that's what our bodies are meant for to do things. But very progressive saying, look, let's move that conversation, Sports Illustrated. Fortunately for us, I don't think they're here to offend. Is anybody from ABC or NBC here for me to <laughs> offend today? Um, so they banned our commercial, which we so appreciate, because then everybody played it for free. It was great, all right? And four billion media impressions later, um, I took all that money, I put it back in the back pocket of the company, and we let the news cycle and social media uh, play our ad for us. But it was interesting, right? This ad can't air on television. And we couldn't figure out or understand why. We didn't, you know, we didn't probe deeply. They gave us their comments, and the reality is, is like, we're not gonna change this. I'm not taking a woman out of, out of this moment using her body to nurse her baby, which in our view is the most purest expression a woman can have of her body. And we can't put that on television, but we can put adulterous affairs on television all night long. Not being judgmental and saying that that's right or wrong. I'm just saying if you can do that, you should be able to do other things too. You should be able to show a body being used to express love in the most pure form. But that's been what's so exciting about this journey and what happened here. And, and I will tell you for, for us, with, with Chris, it's always interesting. And, and, and you know, what I will impart and, and leave with you as a part of this journey is how important it is to be courageous in moving forward your organization and your industry uh, in ways that not just move your bottom line, but move the world. And the reality is today, and I look out here with, uh, with people who have at their disposal the resources to make change in the room. You guys spend the money. Money moves issues. Money moves causes. Money moves needs forward. And you guys can put that to play. And you can do it in a way that does two things. Generates good and drives profitability for, for a company. And my hope is, is that as we think about how we go and what we learn from, from a lesson here is two brands with purpose coming together to move a purpose forward, and at the same time, I think the swimsuit issue did all right this year, right? Pretty good. Yeah. We did all right, too, right, at the end, at the end of the day. Uh, and in a very tough apparel market, I think six to seven quarters of positive comps, uh, and in a declining and very tough women's apparel market, it's pretty impressive and outsized our industry and driven off ideas like this. And it's hard to have the conversation. I remember sitting trying to explain to a board, we've got this really great idea. We're going to spend 30% of all of our working media dollars with a men's magazine. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's awesome. It's the best. It's so targeted right at our audience. We're going to win with this, right? And the board is going, you're nuts, right? But the truth is, is that that's not what they said, because they understood right, what we were trying to do and the kind of movement uh, that could happen as a result of what we did. And so we thought we should let you see <laughs> what happened. This body. This body. This body. It's made for being bold, powerful, and sexy. Hey, I'm Precious, and I'm here shooting with Lane Bryant for Sports Illustrated. I know what it means for so many women that are so underrepresented in huge publications like that. It's pretty special. If my picture was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, not only would we be making history as me being the first ever plus size model, but it would be a revolution. There are three covers!
Sports Illustrated changing the game, oh, breaking gosh. barriers when it comes to both body type and age. It's the perfect storm of beautiful photos and women that represent all things to all people. Three different types of women representing every woman out there. We're rocking it. All those women out there that have struggled with loving the skin that they're in, this issue is truly for you. Hey Boston Ad Club, it's Ashley Graham. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it to be with you guys. Um, I wanna give a shout out to Brian and Chris, my two besties, what's up? Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, my life has completely changed from February till here we are um, in the middle of Fashion Week, September. I have been on multiple covers. I've had multiple speeches. Um, I've had email after email of encouragement from young women who have said thank you for representing someone who's never, representing me, because I've never been represented before in fashion, in media, and film. And um, I really just have to say thank you to Lane Bryant and Sports Illustrated. Uh, Lane Bryant, you've always been a catalyst for um, showing diversity at its finest and 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 showing women that have curves are just as beautiful as women who have always been showed in media and thank you Sports Illustrated for taking a chance and putting a girl my size on the cover of your magazine um, I don't know if you guys understand how much how many lives you guys are changing every single day but um, I get to hear about it all the time and I am so sorry I couldn't be there to to show my personal or to tell my personal story but guys my life has completely changed and I'm living a fairy tale thanks to Brian and Chris, thanks to Sports Illustrated and Lane Bryant and I really hope that more companies continue to show diversity because honestly, diversity is where it's at guys. It's kind of like the in thing right now and if you're not doing it, well, you know, it's, it's the in thing. So, um, just thank you so much. I'm sorry I can't be there and there's always next year. So thank you for having us. I, I, I think it, this just shows that by harnessing uh, a good idea and coming together, having an open mind, adding a dose of creativity can really start a movement that can change the world. And I think you heard it directly from Ashley, what it's done for her life. And if uh, we can do anything like that in the future to spur on that conversation. And once again, I want to thank Brian and Lane Bryant for making this happen because it really is a movement that was, has been at the heart of, of the swimsuit issue. I will leave on one note. The interesting thing was Julie Campbell, who was our founding editor back in 1964, was lauded the very first issue because that she, they, they applauded her for putting, they called it bigger and healthier California women in the issue from the very first issue. And it's always been the background of SI to be healthy and to be fit. So thank you for Brian to help us sort of yeah. extend that message and sort of take it to another level. Thank you, so, Chris. Thank you. So I'll leave one, one parting message, which is as I look at this and, and just grateful for what time, and not just, not just Sports Illustrated, but what you guys are doing across your family of brands um, and essence and people and people style watch and the notion and the movement, you're gonna see a very different world in the future than what you've seen in the past with the way that we look at women. We've been making progress on women's issues for a long time. We still have a long way to go. We talked about that a year ago. They still don't get the same kind of equal pay. They still don't get the same kind of treatment. We still don't see them in the same kind of engineering and math fields and everywhere else. And we certainly have made some, but not enough progress on how we look at women's bodies. But it's interesting for me and it's personal. I have a 22-year-old daughter who went through struggles that I'm so grateful I don't believe my five-year-old daughter will go through. I'll get to see two generations uh, on either side of the spectrum where we've taken a look and we start to measure people based on what they do first and secondarily on everything else. 
and it's okay, we still, I want to be handsome. I want to be seen as handsome too, right? <laughs> but I don't want to be measured. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> but I don't want to be measured, right, based on that. I want to be measured based on the impact. It's the way I measure my daughters. It's the way I measure my wife. It's the way I measure the women and men that I work with. It's how we measure people by whether or not we're having a positive impact on others around us. And I'll go back to that moment that, that I read the email. I read the subject line, Olive Branch. Uh, and I'm a religious person. So I know where the reference comes from. Um, and it's a powerful metaphor for how you take something that was unkind and said about you and respond appropriately. And it's a powerful metaphor for how we have to think about our business, the way that we think about people, and the way that we go forward. And we've taken a lesson from his olive branch. And you'll see how we put it forward in our next campaign that comes out in a couple of weeks. So thank you guys for having us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.